Hello, welcome back to the channel and we're now into April so it's time to look back at my March solar generation how much I used of my solar energy, how much I had to import and therefore how much did I save, how much did my electricity bill in March come to and how much I made from SEG and also March uh, marks an end of an era as this is when my British gas tariff which I've had for two and a half years comes to an end and from the 1st of April I have moved on to Octopus. So if you're also interested in looking for a new uh, energy supplier um, and you're thinking of moving to Octopus if you use my referral code which is along the bottom of the screen now uh, it will uh, give us each £50. Um, there's also a link down below if you just want to click on that and go straight to it, otherwise you have to search uh, for the Octopus Transfer page on Google and then put my uh, code in from there. Okay, so let's just recap what I have on my roof. I've got 12 Qcell 385 uh, watt panels. That totals a peak of 4.65 and through March we have actually been seeing uh, the peak jet power generation. We've actually seen, been seeing a little bit more than the peak. Uh, that feeds into a 5 kilowatt Solis inverter and then that energy is just or power is distributed to the load which is our house or is stored in a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery or exported back to the grid. So, um, all the numbers I show you today are excluding standing charge and the rate for import I was paying was just over 19p per kilowatt hour and my export rate was 15p per kilowatt hour so that's where all these numbers are calculated from and my numbers are normally taken from the Solis app and then they're cross-referenced uh, in terms of import to my smart meter and also my export electricity meter as well and they tend, tend to tally um, very reliably. Okay so let's look at uh, March. It's been a much better March, oh, it's been a mixed March as far as the weather is concerned but it's been much better than February and January. We've had days where there's been quite a bit of sun. We've also had according to the weather more rain than last year and also I think it was the fourth wettest March on record that's in here in Swansea in South Wales or I should say my roof is also south facing and we're on top of a hill. So March if you look at this graph this is our daily energy generation has been pretty good uh, there's been a few days where we've been up at nearly 25 kilowatt hours of generation there was a little period of three days between the 12th and the 14th where it was particularly cloudy and on the worst day of those three days we only generated 1.1 kilowatt hours and that was our worst day in March. But most of the days we've been about averaging about 10 or more kilowatt hours. What's been slightly annoying is that I'd much rather we've had some days which weren't so high for energy generation and that was spread through to other days because then we would have had less import. So let's just see how this looks in our graph of where the energy is being used. So on this graph as usual the red is import so you can see that those three days in the middle of March uh, had quite a lot of input from the grid. All the other days are relatively small except for the 22nd. Uh, the green is self-use so this is energy we're creating on the roof and we're using in real time. As you can say that stays fairly consistent from day to day. The yellow is the discharge from the battery so this is energy we've stored in the battery from our solar and then reused. There was one day when I was playing around with the Octopus app where I did accidentally charge my battery from the grid. I don't usually do that, or I haven't done with British Gas because I didn't have a time of day tariff so it made no sense to charge the battery uh, from the grid. It only times it charges when it became to a very low state of charge and the battery charged itself a little bit just to uh, protect its battery chemistry. And the blue is the export. So you can see we've got a reasonable amount of export throughout the month. So the total generation we had in March was 300 and 
64 kilowatt hours. That's around 70 more than last year. Of that 360, we sent, we used uh, 177 kilowatt hours ourselves. So as our self-use, which means we sent 190 kilowatt hours back to the grid. Our import was 42.1 kilowatt hours. So that if we convert this into money, what this means is that on import through the whole of March, for that 42 kilowatt hours, we spent eight pounds and 24 pence. The money that we saved, so if we were having to just import all our electricity, we saved 34 pounds and uh, 63 pence. And with that SEG of that 190 we sent back to the grid at 15p, that generated us uh, 28 pounds and 52p. So um, that's variation, varying there between pence and p, or pennies. So that's basically our financial update. What that means is that our total money made, this is SEG and money saved, in March was uh, 63 pounds and 15 pence. This was the third highest we've ever had, I believe, but we can check that on a graph in a moment. It also means that we were 19.23% reliant on the grid. So we were just over 80% self-sufficient. This is far better than February where we were 43% um, reliant on the grid. So only 50, 6.6% um, self-sufficient. So we can also now look at, back at our previous years and compare to this. So this is our energy generation. So the dark blue is from 2022 when we had the solar panels installed in August, hence why the, there's only data from August or partial data from August and then full data from September to December. Um, the orange is from last year to 2023. As you can see, that's, that's uh, a full set of data and we follow that usual bell-shaped curve, which hopefully we are now on the ascent of. And the grey is this year. So you can say that this March we had more solar generation than last March. When we look at money made, that's this graph. So as you can see, this March was significantly better than last March. And that's mainly due to the increase in SEG, because last March we were only getting 5p per kilowatt hour compared to 15p this year. And as you can see from this graph, it was the third highest um, payback on our investment of £8,500 for our solar system uh, that we've had. We should also say that uh, in March last year, we spent six, uh, £6.15 on our import compared to £8.15 this year. So this year, just because we had those few bad days in the middle of the month where we had to import a lot, where last March it was more less sun um, when it was very sunny, but more evenly spread. Um, so paid a little bit more this year, um, this year than last year. So next month is going to be an exciting month because I'm going to have to think of a new way of analysing the data and creating comparable graphs. And I've also now got the Octopus app, which um, allows me to get, uh, get data from there. So that's what I'm going to be trying from. What's something else I'm going to be do is changing the channel. So I think it's due for a bit of a refresh. So if you look, noticed um, down below, um, my hashtag or my title is Dr. Chris J. Barnett, Nano Expert. What I'm going to be changing that to is Dr. Chris J. Barnett, uh, Green Tech, because I'm going to turn the channel more into um, looking at green energy, looking at renewable energy, looking at the tech that's out there and explaining the sciences behind this, because I haven't had really time to go fully into the nano, which I did when I first started the channel, but that seems to have dropped off. What I'll also be doing is setting up a second channel for my tutoring uh, stuff. So my maths videos will be on that channel, and I'll be making more of those as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. And I'll see you in another video very soon.